Okay, welcome everybody uh, to the personal brand workshop by Aya Arafa and Dima Al Halabi, uh, Ernst and Young Nina Campus Recruitment Consultants. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for us to get a chance to be talking to Ernst and Young Campus Recruitment Consultants. Uh, these ladies have a lot of experience. Uh, uh, they will be able to answer a lot of your questions. They meet a lot of students. So really, this is a good opportunity to be as interactive as you can. Uh, ask as many questions as you can. Uh, like we had mentioned earlier, uh, we will be uh, uh, doing the session again tomorrow. Uh, and we are, as you can see, recording the session. Uh, I'm going to hand over now to Aya and Dima. Uh, please, uh, I, I hand over the mic to you guys. Thanks, Ahmad. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And welcome to our personal brand workshop. Um, my name is Dima Al Halabi, and I joined EY's talent team in October 2018. Um, I'm responsible for recruitment in Beirut and Al Khubar, and I'm based in uh, Beirut. Uh, honestly, uh, probably yeah, the people close to me would know that um, I'm very passionate about my career at EY and the learning experiences that I have been receiving at EY ever since um, has been very, very. Uh, very um, uh, critical in shaping my professional and personal uh, development. I used to work previously in the biggest accelerator program, Health Prize, in supporting youth in creating their own social enterprises. And ever since I felt that HR is the thing that I want to pursue. Uh, so over to you, Aya. Thank you, Dima. Uh, thank you all for participating participating today. Uh, we are delighted to have you with us. Uh, my name is Aya Arafe and I'm the campus recruitment consultant for EY Amman and Jadda offices. I look after attracting new MENA talent along to amplifying the EY brand. I have a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering and I've always been into HR technology and how it impacts people. I got hooked into HR after starting my work at the startup company, uh, which created a recruitment software based on artificial intelligence. Uh, with my technical background, interest in HR and technology, I've built on that base till I had the opportunity to work for EY and uh, committed myself into a building a better working world and enjoying the experience ever since. Thank you again, and we hope you enjoy today's session. Thanks, Over to you, Dima. So the purpose of our session today is actually providing you more insights on your personal brand and how to build it. Heads up guys, we're expecting you to be very interactive on the chat box. So please, please uh, leverage the chat box and type in uh, anything that you would want to share with us. For those of you who are interested in knowing more about the MENA vacant positions and the opportunities that we have, our experts are waiting for you in the channel room at Localize to answer all your queries and questions. Which brings me to my next question. What qualities do you believe make a great leader? Please type in uh, your responses of the qualities that you think would make a great leader. Come on, guys, we're waiting for responses. Is it uh, having uh, knowledge, empathy, absolutely, honesty, tolerance, great, great answers, charisma, be kind, innovative, wow. Knowing how to deal with people, ability to listen on Yane. This is exactly this is exactly what we want. We want to see your opinions, your on spot views. answers. Uh, and Yane, I'm <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Um, so at EY, I really had the pleasure to work with truly, truly exceptional readers, having some of those qualities uh, that you have mentioned. And uh, I think that this is something that EY provides for all its people uh, working with different mindset individuals who have these kind of leadership skills. Plus, thank you, Farah, respectful, thank you. And, and actually, this is one of the things that we say, we, we look for people who have these qualities when we select uh, uh, our candidates. So, um, so as I was mentioning, we, we have we, we have this opportunity to work with uh, people demonstrating and showcasing those great uh, leadership qualities. 
over to uh, over to you, Aya. Who do you think is your uh, leader or a great leader that you have worked with at EOI that you'd like to mention? You're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Personally speaking, one of the greatest people I had the pleasure to work with uh, under EY was uh, Shahad Al Adra. She made such a great impact uh, on me to kickstart my career uh, journey at EY. Uh, she was supportive beyond words, empathetic, and a true character, emphasizing on the fact that I had the chance to work with her for a short period of time, yet uh, you we, you can imagine exactly how gracefully charismatic she was to leave such a mark and a great impression. Absolutely, and Anna, if I want to list down the, the amazing people I've worked with in the past two years, uh, I'd feel bad about it. So I'll, I'll pass answering this question. <laughs> uh, moving on to, um, after we have listed down those qualities that we all think are critical in, in shaping great leaders, I think now more and uh, more than ever, and Ahmed, I, I think you agree with this, that now more than ever, uh, it is the right time to invest in, uh, in closing down the gaps and improving ourselves to be the great leaders that we aspire to be. Whatever our rank or role is, everyone is a leader and everyone has the base to be uh, a leader. Would you please guys answer me on this question? What will be more important in the future? Is it the right skill set or the mindset? Ahmed, what do you think? What will be more thank, important? Thank you, Dima. I, I personally, I think mindset. And I can explain why. Uh, I don't want to cut into your presentation, but I think skills are forever changing. Um, uh, skills that there are skills obviously that last through time, but there are specifically when you're talking about technical skills and the introduction of technology in our everyday life, there are new skills that you constantly need to be learning. If you have the right mindset, and the uh, then you're able to um, uh, continue to learn these new skills. Absolutely. Um, actually, we're getting a lot of response skills uh, are developed from a proper mindset. Thanks, Saeed, Omar. But a mindset should have the priority skills like what? Interesting. So it depends on uh, in which field you're in. This is the kind of skill set that uh, we are uh, asking you. So if you're, for example, in uh, audit, then the skills would would go back to finance and and auditing and uh, probably getting CPAs and uh, professional qualifications and and whatnot. So, going back to this question, and as Ahmed mentioned, I want to highlight the fact that it isn't uh, there isn't an, a right and wrong answer. So. It's, it's not a clear cut thing where we can say one thing is better than the other or not. But it is worth uh, remembering that we are in the technology era and things are changing, uh, hugely being disrupted with the technology. And this is an example that we're now in a virtual career fair. Uh, months ago, we were doing it physically and we, we completely transformed it to a virtual career fair. So. The right skill set or the mindset, it's, it depends. It depends how uh, and in which industry uh, we're looking at. But definitely with the technology uh, being uh, involved, we have furthermore more, more focus on the mindset. And this is why our goal today by the end of this session is to make you discover your unique selling point or your proposition, what makes you, uh, what makes you who you are and what is your personal brand today and how will you evolve it with the different experiences that you're going to encounter. Remember this question because we're going to refer to it a lot during our presentation. So moving on to what is a personal brand? And uh, as you can see, there are three main characteristics of a personal brand. Uh, at EY, we base them on the transformational leadership framework. So it's perfectly fine if you haven't heard of these three um, characteristics previously or not specifically do with those terms. 
uh, this is the purpose of today's session, to let you know more about each one of these uh, characteristics and work together in developing them. I have a very interesting exercise that uh, I would like you guys to um, help me do. So, um, Aya, can you move on to the next uh, slide, please? Right, before the exercise, I'm going to ask you about Jeff Bezos. Have you ever heard of Jeff Bezos? Give me something. Who is he? What does he do? It's over there. <laughs> Absolutely. So Amazon, he's the founder of Amazon. He's one of the richest men, if not the richest, uh, with over 165 billion US dollar net worth. Um, Jeff Bezos, and I, I'm quoting, has a great, great way of telling us what a brand is. A brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. I mean, let's, let me give you an example. Imagine that one of those 61 attendees who have come into our session today, five of you guys was invited to attend a live face-to-face -face physical event with EY. So we connected previously, and I know that um, Omar Dao, for example, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, wasn't able to join uh, the, the, the workshop. So I know Omar's doctor, so I connect with Omar's doctor and I ask him about Omar. So whatever Omar's doctor is going to say about him is his personal brand. This is to highlight the importance of personal brand and how uh, to connect it to you, no matter what you do. If you're still a student, if you graduated, if you're someone with years of experience, it all uh, adds up to this code. I think now is the time of our exercise. Yes, I love this. So guys, uh, I'd like you please to use your cell phones and log into menti.com. And uh, once you log into menti.com, uh, you will uh, be asked to insert this code. And this question would uh, pop up. Who is your personal hero? Think of someone who inspires you. Think of someone who is famous or not. It can be someone from your personal life you have worked with, uh, a relative, and insert your answers. Once you do so, we're going to show you uh, everyone's answers on this word cloud. The very interesting- Some answers coming, my wow. dad, my uncle, my mother, my father. Wow. Interesting. Sufyan. My aunt, my professor, Elon Musk. Interesting. Remember, it can be anybody. The code, exactly. uh, the code is four six eight zero eight zero for you, Shahid. It's on top of our screen. We're gonna give it um, a minute. I want like this can't be sixty five participants. We need more answers. Come on, guys. Michael Jordan, ooh. Could you type the code, please, Aya, in the chat box? The code is 468080. My therapist. Nice. Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. I love her. So. I'd like to answer this question of my personal hero, who I think is um, is really my dad and Jacinda Arden. So I think that um, these two people in my life um, show they show great support and uh, Jacinda Arden shows support to her people in New Zealand. <laughs> but I mean, my dad shows great support, responsible, courageous. He has those qualities that I believe um, puts him as uh, my personal hero. So great answers. I think that this shows us, um, Hick, what uh, our attendees think. My professor, I love that. Great. Moving on to 
the characteristics. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone uh, who have uh, filled in this uh, exercise. And the, you will know in few the reason why we're asking you to, to think about these, uh, these questions. Going back to our personal brand characteristics, remember we said that there are three characteristics that are um, based on the EY's leadership framework. Does anyone by any chance remember those three characteristics? One of them? Maybe not. <laughs> Agility, vitality, well, presence. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to hand over the mic to thanks, presence, agility. Absolutely. We're going to get a deeper dive into each one of those characteristics and few with Aya. Um, and uh, over to you, Aya. Thank you, Dima. Uh, just to make sure that you can see my screen, correct? Yes. Perfect. So, um, all right, let's start with the first pillar of EY's personal leadership framework, presence. Presence is defined as communicating with confidence, humility, and integrity to build trust and support others. If you have noticed, presence, vitality, agility are all non-technical skills, which takes us back to our better question, skill set versus mindset. It's absolutely critical to improve your skill set. Yet, as of today, you have to focus on your mindset big time, considering our technological era. Whenever we talk about presence and its meaning, try to link it to your day to day activities till it becomes a habit. For example, if you are at your desk or sitting in a library and an individual comes up to have a conversation with you, let them know that they've got your full attention. Close your laptop, make eye contact with them to let them know that you are listening to them, to fully engage with them and let them know that they have your full attention. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Your energy is contagious. Be an energy giver, not an energy taker. Vulnerability is a leadership differentiator. For those of you who think that vulnerability is a weakness, I recommend watching this powerful TED talk by Dr. Renee Brown. Dr. Renee Brown talks about the power of vulnerability. She's a scientist who based her studies on research and data analytics. She studied people who are happy and successful, and I believe we all want to be happy and successful. Her research proved that the number one quality these people displayed is vulnerability. She also has a great documentary on Netflix for those interested. So whenever we talk about presence, I want you to think about your responses to these questions as they will give you a strong indication on your presence as you see it. I highly recommend that you take a screenshot of these slides to re-ask yourself these questions to have that self-reflection piece, put theory into practice. And this session will be a game changer for you. Do I demonstrate authenticity and vulnerability to build trust? Do I communicate with passion to inspire and influence others? Do I connect in a caring and empathetic way to build positive relationships? At EY, for instance, we have LEAD system, which is a performance framework system. Me, Dima, and my colleagues, we are asked three times a year to seek feedback from our colleagues and the people we work with in regards to our performance. Yet, I can also assess my own performance where I would be asked such questions similar to these ones to assess myself. Self-reflection, again, is very beneficial to develop yourself personally and to ensure that you are on the right track. Personally speaking, presence is one 
or more of like a necessity working as a recruiter. As you are the first point of contact with candidates, we interact with you, we are more of like the, we are reflecting the company's image. We engage with you. We have to be on the same wavelength to understand you. We have to build trust with each other, strong connections while displaying humility. Dima, what about you? Can you share with us, please? Um, absolutely. I think that presence is very, very crucial for, for everyone, no matter what he does, no matter what his position is, if you're a student again or someone with in working whatever field. Presence really is essential in, in building that brand and building trust with others. And I think that it's, it's quite important to have it, to build those positive relationships around us, to keep going. And I think the COVID-19 situation was a great uh, virtual presence test for us all uh, to be able to stay connected, communicating with, e with each other and showing uh, care and uh, empathy. Yes. Empathy, absolutely empathy towards each other during the, these times. So, so yeah, I, I can't agree more with this piece. Perfectly said. The goal of this session is to highlight that we are all leaders and we have that capacity to demonstrate these characteristics. So the next time you are invited to a networking event like this, localized, any other networking event, a family gathering, a friends gathering, ask yourself these questions. How would you interact with people and stand out between the crowd? Whenever you display confidence, people will automatically look up to you. Going back to the point that your energy is contagious. The second pillar is vitality. Vitality means to actively maintain personal well-being, energy, and enthusiasm. There are different ways to maintain vitality. Take an occasional gaze out the window, laugh with your colleagues, schedule a regular talk to a regular time to think i personally take a walk within the office for about five minutes to stay focused and to help me re-energize and reorganize my thoughts in order to perform at your best you must take care of your mental physical and emotional well-being do you focus on your mental physical and emotional well-being before you say yes to this question within the chat box, please answer if you usually sleep after midnight. Dima, do you usually <laughs> sleep before or after midnight? Um, to be very honest with you, during the week, I try to sleep uh, before midnight, but mm -hmm. in the weekend, Diana, it's the weekend. What about you guys? <laughs> Any answers within the chat box? Um, we're getting some responses. I'm not a morning person. Yes, I do around 1 a.m. 50-50 after midnight, weekdays before. We got both, I think. I try okay. my best to get eight hours of sleep. Great. Great. Do it. You are actually on the right track. We might love to say that you're a night owl, yet unfortunately, your body is telling you a very different story, as quality of sleep diminishes greatly after midnight. In fact, too little sleep causes reduced efficiency and productivity and an increase in errors. Let's link this to our current situation with COVID-19. We have faced lockdown, we are deprived of doing a lot of things that we have taken for granted, like going out whenever we want and connect with our family and friends whenever we feel like to. Yet because of this same situation, we have created other methods that fill, it, fill out this gap to maintain our well-being and energy. Whether it's meditation, doing your workout at home, or interacting more with your family and friends, we all started searching for alternatives to keep us vital. Going back to the questions. Do you manage commitments to achieve balance? Do you really manage that balance between work and family by preparing, for example, an agenda uh, work-wise, family-wise, and family-wise, 
and friends ways to achieve that balance? Do you persist? in the face of setbacks to make that progress. Let's say that, let's put it into an example. Let's say that uh, you had an exam in one month, yet you started studying for it the night before. You got your results and you were disappointed. You didn't really do good. This is about how you would react to that setback. Did you dust yourself off and got back up, learned from the mistakes and the next time you did it properly? Or did you convince yourself that you are no longer good in that subject, so why bother? Let's not put that effort. I highly recommend that you take screenshots of these slides to re-ask yourself again these questions, to put theory into practice. Practicing is key. And start as of today to do these micro actions to become habits. We will shortly do an exercise together that is doable at any time, any place, to help you put theory into practice and to maintain your well-being. Hi, we're getting really great uh, messages on the chat box. Uh, Ziad saying, never give up, tomorrow is a new day. I can't Absolutely. Um, yeah, and going, just I want to highlight on the setbacks part and the importance of really, especially during these times, I think in the MENA region as a whole, uh, and globally, actually, uh, there there are a lot of challenges going on uh, in in each each one's uh, each one's um, the where the place that they are in. So it's very important for fresh graduates, for people searching for jobs, to keep that momentum going, to keep trying, to learn from mistakes, to to fix the gaps on their CV, to improve their skills, uh, to to keep pushing forward no matter what is going on uh, around to keep that focus and that kind of which bring us the mindfulness that uh, you're, you're going to talk about now I am perfectly said and thank you Ziad for your participation so uh, I want you uh, to list down within the chat box if you have ever heard about mindfulness what mindfulness is We're getting some answers. Yeah, we're getting a lot of people sharing um, sharing with us being aware and present. Yes, exactly. Being aware and present, your thoughts and uh, to be present. Great. For those who are not familiar with the what mindfulness means, that is totally okay. Mindfulness is actually paying attention to the present moment on purpose, observing without judgment. Mindfulness is not religion. It's not having no thoughts, in fact. When someone practices mindfulness regularly, the awareness of thoughts, feelings, and emotions is the practice. It is greater self-awareness and being more present. There's actually a, a Harvard study which showed that 40% of time, our minds are somewhere else. For example, how many times did you end up reaching your destination without really remembering how you got there? Has this ever happened to you, Dima, or to the audience? I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty. This happens to me all the time. Uh, and I try my best and not to practice and to focus on the moment and be very mindful where things are going, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. So going back to what science says, we are interrupted every three minutes in the workplace. Imagine that. We check our emails 74% a day, 74 times a day. Facebook, 18 times a day. So it's like around four now. How many times? Have you checked your social media accounts? Please add your answers within the chat box. I believe that we all check our social media accounts frequently. <laughs> Today, none over 20 times, 24 7. Wow. Quite a bit. <laughs> Lean well, 10 times to say at least 20 to 30 every 15 minutes or so. So yeah, I am. Um, 
Okay. We, we, we do check our social media. <laughs> okay. So just to highlight that the cost it takes to get back to track whenever you, uh, let's say, get interrupted by checking your email or Facebook or any uh, social media account, it takes you 23 minutes to refocus on the same tasks you were doing before you got interrupted. Imagine that. So why do you think these days we are asking you to put your phones away? Or even within this session, we are highlighting how many times you have checked your social media accounts. We want you to stay present in the here and now. This highlights that multitasking is actually for making errors. It makes you less efficient and less productive. Okay, so we will now do an exercise together. This will be an exercise for your brain. I encourage you all to participate. Again, mindfulness is paying attention to the present moment on purpose. Some of you might not be uh, interested in meditation or link it to a negative connotation. Yet, I ask you to give it a try, give it a shot, as this will be a game changer. We'll do a quick breathing exercise. So let's start off by putting our backs straight. I want you all to participate with us, please. Put your backs up straight, put your feet flat on the floor and close your eyes. If you're not comfortable doing so, otherwise just lower your gaze, it's okay. Now, pay attention to the spot where you most feel your breath usually the tip of your nose, your chest, your abdomen. Place your attention on that spot and just notice your body breathing. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now you'll probably notice that your mind is actually shifting towards a thought or a judgment. When that happens, just gently acknowledge that your mind went that way and gently escort it back to the breathing point. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. This mind wandering will happen again and again and is totally okay and fine. This is an indication that you are become, becoming mindful. Take a last breath. Breathe in and breathe out. You can slowly now open your eyes when you're ready. How did that feel? How did that feel, Dima, and the audience? Um. Honestly, it's relaxing, but at the same time, you're trying to actually focus on the moment and not to allow your thoughts to race. So it's not easy, but, uh, but it's fine. It's, it's a good exercise. Exactly. So taking about eight to 10 minutes for mindfulness on a daily basis, can have a significant impact on you. You might not be as much comfortable doing that today or the day after or the day after, yet as you practice, you will have that significant impact just because you were mindful in the present moment and you put that effort to calm yourself. The, th the cool thing about this is that this exercise is doable at any place, any time, at your momentum. You can also do mindfulness by taking um, a minute pause 
or to take a deep breath before a big meeting, a presentation, uh, a difficult conversation. This helps clearing out your mind and helping you stay focused, opening up space to be fully present. Remember, practice is key. All right, we move on to the last characteristic, which is agility. Agility is to exhibit curiosity, self-awareness, to adapt behavior and connect in diverse contexts. Ask yourself, would I want to follow me? Do I get comfortable with the uncomfortable? At times, we are all put in uncomfortable situations when being asked questions that we don't really have on-spot answers to. You won't always have all the answers, and that is totally fine. Going back to the fact that vulnerability, as per Dr. Renee Brown, vulnerability is a leadership differentiator and is okay that you don't have the answers. You have to trust yourself and you have to trust your team as well. To assess agility today, ask yourself these questions. Do I observe, listen, and ask questions to understand the situation? My advice to you, whenever you want to understand a situation, think about the language you use. For example, don't start your question with why. So I was communicating with Dima and uh, then I asked Dima, why did you do this? At that instant, Dima will be under the spot. She will be more under the defensive mechanism. So watch your language. Don't start the question with why. Do I monitor assumptions and emotions and adjust my responses to fit the circumstances? So let's say that you received an angry email or if someone did something that isn't correct. The first indicator that you are reacting in an emotional way is that when your body starts to react and your heartbeat, uh, heartbeat increases and your palms sweat. So before going to that defensive mode and put your emotions tailoring that reply to that email or to reply back to that person instantly, pause and monitor yourself and adjust your responses and then respond back. This is what agility is about. Do I navigate ambiguity and complexity to make sound decisions? So for example, if you had a decision to make and you cannot make up your mind on it, write it down, analyze it, uh, read it out loud, read it multiple times, and then based on that, make that sound decision. So we have now covered all three characteristics to create a strong personal brand, yet there is a lot to come. Be interactive as much as possible, ask us questions, and over to you, Dima. Thanks, Aya. Thank you for uh, a very deep dive into our three personal brand characteristics. Uh, moving on to your personal brand. Okay, we have went through the three characteristics of a personal brand, but what does it really say? You're setting expectation of value. So for example, when someone knows that uh, Dima is a curious person, she asks a lot of questions, she's always interactive in meetings. And honestly, uh, when I don't depict this specific characteristics, my colleagues go on and ask me, is everything fine? Are you okay? So when you have a specific characteristic, it is going to be an expectation of value to others. And others are going to expect you to show these characteristics. And there are definitely um, some characteristics in you that will set you apart from everyone else. The courtesy that saves time because they know that you, they can depend on you. 
So Aya is a very dependable person. When she's committed, she's committed. Everyone will know that Aya in this situation is committed. This is Aya's personal brand. So when you um, create your personal brand, keep in mind that you are setting expectations that need to be delivered. It's very important uh, to keep in mind, I, if you can move on to the next slide, please. How do we actually define that personal brand? Where do I start? What are the questions that I need to ask myself? Uh, how do I do it? Start with self-reflecting. What do I want to be known for? What makes me different from others? What can people expect from me? Something that I'm really good at, something that I want to be famous for. Start with a couple of questions, focusing on those. You don't need to have the answers and it will start building up and you will start defining the personal brand that you want to have. And it's not going to be rigid. We, yeah, it's, it's not going to stick your personal brand is not going to stay the way it is forever. It's a it work in progress. It evolves, exactly. It evolves with time, with experiences, with, uh, with different uh, things that you do and uh, encounter. experience, yeah. encounter, exactly. So um, remember this question, and it's highlighted in yellow for a reason because it's very important. What do I want to be known for? And you are going to use this question to build up the next exercise that I'm not going to tell you about just yet. This question is going to be critical in answering how a strong personal brand would look like. Is it authentic? Is it distinctive? clear your personal brand is uh, we, you know, our our leaders always say that it's it is not you're not expected to have a very complex personal brand with uh, uh, with uh, with 3000 different dimensions it can be simple one or two distinctive characteristics that you are identifying yourself with them consistent authentic as in real because if it wasn't real you're not going to be consistently depicting that specific characteristic. This would create a strong personal brand that you would need moving forward in your career or your personal uh, endeavors. To be able to build your personal brand, asking questions is essential. And going back to the, your unique selling proposition or something that identifies you uh, that is different than others, that is strong, uh, that, that sets you apart from, from anyone else, that shows you what you believe in, what, what motivates you, what energizes you, what kind of um, things you want to achieve. It's all included in building your personal brand. I will ask a few in, in, this, in the next exercise. Now we'll be, it will be um, available tomorrow on our chat uh, functionality on US page on Localize, is to create your elevator pitch. Creating your elevator pitch using what we mentioned today, the three characteristics, using um, the questions that we casted out, simply, Two or three sentences that define who you are, that sets you apart, that you want to be uh, recognized with. Those two or three sentences are the way that will, will allow you to connect with different people, to, to, to differentiate yourself from, from others, that will show your true value compared to other uh, uh, candidates. So we'll be waiting for you to create your own elevator pitch available on where we'll be available on the chat box to discuss with you and speak more about your pitch. And um, so you have, Yanni, you have all the time you need. Uh, I believe that we'll be uh, uh, also having the localized uh, 
updates for the next week or so. So we'll be connecting with you. Yes, it, it, it will be available until the 15th of, uh, of July. So plenty of time. Great, that's amazing. So we look forward to, uh, to talk to you about your elevator pitch and us discussing it with you uh, deeply and one-to-one -one conversations. Right, so how do, we, how do we actually project our brand? Is it only through uh, an elevator pitch? Is it only through our CV? All of these items that you can see will and do contribute to your own form and your own personal brand. If it's in the way that you dress, if it's in the way that you write your CV, if it's in the way that you use your social media platforms, your, your social media profiles, they all contribute to your own personal brand and how you want to pitch it to everyone else. And essentially, uh, uh, keeping this in mind that it's not through one or two aspects that you project yourself. It's through all of these um, items. If it's in, in the way that you write your emails and reports and letters or how you talk to your class or your classmates, it's, it's all contributes to your own person brand and how you uh, put yourself out there. Uh, adding up to this uh, in regards to building your personal brand, one of the, the let's say, um, virtual aspects of building your personal brand in the meantime uh, via your LinkedIn profiles. So uh, always make sure that they are up to date without any type of errors uh, with a professional uh, profile image uh, reflecting uh, the current uh, position that you're at, uh, mention your skill set uh, properly, uh, what differentiates you from other uh, candidates because uh, again also that um, applies uh, to your resumes. So uh, imagine that uh, there would be a role that uh, 500 people have applied to. So you have to work on that elevator pitch, a unique uh, proposition to differentiate you from the uh, other candidates. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and Dima, can, this... I, can I ask a question about this part in particular? Because these are quite a few elements here. So, so how do I, there needs to, does there need to be consistency throughout all of these? And can you give us advice on how to get to that consistency? Um, actually, it's, it, it really depends on the way that you would want to project your brand. So uh, definitely, and there's, again, there's, there's no right or wrong answer in this. Uh, there isn't a, st a standard that, we should be following but keep in mind the three the the four elements that create a strong personal brand consistency is one of them uh, clarity is one of them uh, distinctiveness is, is one of them but there isn't really uh, a right or wrong uh, answer regarding this uh, specific question ahmad thank you thank you right uh, so if you want to move forward to the next uh, thing, our final thoughts, and we'll be taking some questions from, from our audience. Final thoughts, Aya? Sure. So as a recap, uh, we have uh, covered the following. We have agreed that mindset and skill set are important, yet we have to work on our mindset as of today to keep up with technology and uh, to be up to date. We talked about the three main characteristics to create strong personal branding, presence, vitality, and agility. We have talked about the three inputs to create strong elevated pitch, uh, USP, and what you want to be famous for. The fact that your personal brand will evolve based on your experiences you encounter. So your personal brand today will definitely be uh, different than your personal brand 10 years from now. Our focus is you, and we are looking forward to being part of your journey. So we encourage you all to work on that elevator pitch, reach out to us on the EY Mina channel, and interact with us for one-to-one -one conversations to work on that. 
please stay connected with us on our MENA channels to keep up to date. And thank you all for attending today's session. We are now available to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Aya and Dima, very much for this very insightful session. Uh, I, I personally enjoyed it very much, and I've learned quite, uh, quite a few things. I actually have a few questions, but I think uh, I'd like to hear from our audience um, uh, if, if they have any questions. Um, I wanted to add that uh, we do have the ability for our users to create their profiles on Localized, uh, and I believe uh, that that could fall within uh, the, the social media context that you that you message. Make sure that your profile showcases the, your personal brand. Be consistent uh, and try to show these the characteristics that we talked about or that A and Dima talked about within your localized uh, platform. Because this is where you can really reach out to experts in the industry. Um, and again, your elevator pitch at that point also becomes extremely important. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and the, your, your localized profile is very important as well, Liane. Um, we are using it. We are using your profile once, Masalan, we want to chat one-on-one -on -one with, with, with you. Uh, we will look into that profile. Is it full? Did the candidate really take the time to, to um, think about what he wants to insert in, in that profile and and whatnot, and even I would like to connect with with uh, with candidates over LinkedIn you know, moving forward. So um, go ahead and do that if 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 you want to stay connected with uh, someone in any company. Go ahead, connect, put yourself out there. Don't be um, you know, put yourself out there and to get what you want. Try to try to get what you want. So. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'm looking at the comments. It's it's really nice to uh, that, that we have presented uh, to you today and will be available on the chat, as mentioned. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we look forward uh, uh, to speak with you regarding your elevator pitch. Thanks. Dima and Aya, thank you again. Uh, for everyone, I posted the link uh, for the Ernst & Young page on Localize. I'm posting it again now. Please do visit them there. Uh, if you enjoyed the session today, please uh, tell your colleagues uh, if you think they might be, uh, be they could benefit from it, please uh, ask them to join tomorrow. Uh, again, finally, Dima, Aya, thank you very much for your time. And I thank look you, Ahmed. To see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you all.